How do you two, Bunky Joe here, Unky Joe's Playhouse, and as promised, today is the day we start our Windows Lab series. Woohoo! I'm going to show you. Uh, I finally got my Windows Lab unit set up. I've got. I've saved one for last because today I want to cover uh, how to uh, use DHCP DNS on an Active Directory server and how all that ties in with my lab, how I'm setting up my lab so that you'll have a general rough explanation of how DHCP works under Active Directory and how DNS works and how to join a machine to an Active Directory domain and what that means to your Active Directory domain. So buckle up buttercups, it's going to be a fun ride today. Let's get the video started right now. Sorry for the background noise today, but uh, got to have my air conditioning on. Actually, you know what, I could probably shut it off for this video. And uh, if it starts getting warm, I turn it back on. All right, I've shut it off for now. I have, however, made the decision that I am going to get a mini split heater and air conditioner for this office. I don't know if I'm gonna do it before the end of the year or the beginning of next year, but I digress. So what we have before us, as I told everybody, I had promised and promised I was gonna do the Windows Lab series. Things have been busy with work and whatnot, and I just hadn't had a chance to get around it. In fact, part and parcel, there's a laptop I'm working on for a client right now. It's a Sony Bio. Um, let me see if I can get myself centered in this camera. With these new monitors, it's hard to determine that. And then we might have the microphone peeking in and out of the shot, but no big deal. Raise the camera up just a tad. There we go. All right. So what we're going to cover today is <clears throat> I'm going to uh, cover DHCP and DNS and, and why they're important in an active directory domain and, and how I do mine. So this is not a soup to nuts tutorial or anything like that, but uh, it'll give you an idea of how I do things. So I've got over here on my hypervisor machine, this is running on my Dell one of my Dells, the one with the mini processors and 24 gig RAM. And what I've done is I've imported a, another Windows 7. I'm going to have a couple of Windows 7 and about three Windows 10 machines in this lab, just to give you an idea of what uh, how it would work in the real world. So uh, this is a SysPrep system that uh, I have imported. And so now I need to go ahead and go out and boot it up. Well, first of all, make sure it's got the right amount of RAM. On my Windows 7 virtual machines, I only give them 2 gig of RAM. I give them two virtual processors, so that's okay. So I'm going to go ahead and fire up this machine. And it's going to go through its out-of-box experience, the OOBE. So after you've SIFS prepped a, a Windows machine, it generalizes it. And when you boot up, it has to go out and detect all the drivers, etc. So that's what it's going to do here. And then what, once that's done, we're going to join it to our Active Directory domain. And then what we're going to do is go into the Active Directory side of things. And I'm going to show you how that uh, how that uh, affects everything in Active Directory. Uh, joining it to a domain and how it affects DHCP and DNS. And then how I like to set up things for DHCP and DNS. So we're going to let this come up and I'll come back uh, in a moment. Now I've gone ahead and I brought up Task Manager and I've brought up Resource Manager so you all can see the uh, kind of impact this has on the system while I'm doing things. It's a nice little way to look at it. So this is a Win 7 Pro. Lab 2 is a computer name and a DAMA 1 because I've already got a DAMA in there. I forgot to clean that up when I made this, uh, when I was just prepped this image. So it's uh, left over. I'm going to skip the activation. Central time. It's work network. Pretty zippy for a virtual machine. And you can see I've got quite a few virtual machines right now. I've got quite a bit of my memory in use. CPU usage is negligible. 
but that's because all of these virtual machines are just kind of sitting here really not doing anything except running all right so we're at the desktop now the next thing I'm gonna oh, I'm not gonna do this the next thing I'm gonna do is go to the computer go to properties the name is already selected so what I want to do is I'm going to join this to my Active Directory domain. So I'm going to come here to domain and type in my domain name. You don't have to put the local in there, I just do. Personal preference. Click on OK. It's going to prompt you for your admin password and username. Okay, so now we're joined to the domain. It's going to tell us we need to restart. And we'll let the virtual machine restart. Shouldn't take too terrible long. So um, we've joined the Active Directory domain. Now what's going to happen this time when it boots up and, and logs in, it's going to go and update all of its policies, security policies, group policies, etc. It inherits all that from the network and we're going to be dealing with group policy editor today or in a future video I'm sorry let me go ahead and log on now the way I prefer to log on we need to switch our user here is I use the login name at the domain and you'll see it says log on to mcs.local and that's fine now what should happen is it should log on to the domain. It should get an IP address. It should register itself with DNS. It should register itself with Active Directory. All of that wonderful stuff. You know, I'm still a big fan of Windows 7. Uh, I love Windows 10. It's pretty fast, but man, all that crap they put into Windows 10 has just kind of ticked me off. Now these are my preferences. I don't like these large icons down here on the taskbar. So if I look now, uh, let me, uh, I need to clear out some folders. Just want to get all these machines the same. So if I go to network, it should tell me I need to turn on discovery. And when I do, I should be able to go out there and see my other machines. Well, let's just do a little experiment. Make sure I can get onto my NAS and it lets me in without any trouble. And it does. Yay! So now we have joined this Windows 7 Pro Lab machine to the Active Directory domain. And uh, now let's go see the impact it made on Active Directory, DNS, and DHCP. So if we look at the Hyper-V manager here, and we go down each machine you'll notice that on the networking tab down here well you can't see the networking tab but suffice it to say it's there let's see if I can uh, move the image up some no and no worky uh, but you can see what I'm talking about here so under network adapter it gives me my MAC address and my IP address and I can do that with all of these machines I get a MAC address here my IP address MAC address IP address MAC address IP address doesn't show on this one on Windows 7 for whatever reason same with Windows 7 Pro uh, Lab 2 so it shows them for the Windows 10 machines but not for the Windows 7 machines but that's no big deal because I have that that other nice little program that allows us to uh, organize everything on our network. Let me move my uh, lovely picture to the center of the screen here. Hi everybody. So let's look down here. So here's our lab units for Windows 10. Lab, uh, our Enterprise Lab 1, our Pro Lab 1, and Pro Lab 2. We come over here, it gives us our uh, MAC address and our IP address. Same way with our Windows 7 Pro Lab 1 and Pro Lab 2. 
they haven't been scanned because the firewall's turned on, but they've been given an IP. They've got their own individual MAC address. So those are the ones we're going to be focusing on today. Those are the ones we want to fix up in Active Directory. So I'm going to move myself back over here and then we're going to come up to our domain controller. I'm going to bring that over here so you can see it. So if we go into Active Directory Users and Computers, I want to go in here first on our domain controller. And we come up here to Computers, you'll see there's Windows 7 Pro Lab 1 and Pro Lab 2, but there are no other computers in there. And that's because I did what's called uh, creating an organizational unit under Active Directory for my business. And what I've done is, you can think of these as uh, you know, a filing cabinet and these are folders. It's just for organizational usage. It helps you keep stuff straight in your head. So within MCS Business, I've created a security group organizational unit. Uh, I've created an organ organizational unit, OU. Let's say OU from now on for my servers, for my users, and for my workstations. So the MCS series of workstations are actual uh, uh, production machines that I use on my network. These of course are lab units. So what we want to do is we want to get these computers over here. We want to move them. So I'm just going to do a shift click and I'm going to drag and drop them onto workstations. Now it's going to warn you uh, it can prevent it from working. Uh, we're not going to go a lot into organizational units, but suffice it to say, as long as you create your organizational units beforehand and, and drag your computers down to them, you're going to be fine. So now under workstations, we have our Windows 7 Pro Lab 1, Pro Lab 2, and our Windows 10 uh, Pro and Enterprise machines. So if I were to right click on one of these and go to properties, it'll tell you uh, usually what uh, the computer name is, what type of domain controller, the operating system, the member of, etc, etc, etc. So it, it does this for you automatically, puts them into the computer's organization, OU, anytime you have a machine join uh, a network or an Active Directory domain. The other thing that happens is, and this is very important for Active Directory, is it creates a uh, DNS entry for those machines as well. So you see I have a DNS entry for my three Windows 10 units and my for my two Windows 7 units. And we'll come back to that. And then what's really important is DHCP. Um, I haven't gone into depth on setting up a DHCP server. Uh, we'll save that for another video, but I just wanted to show you under this scope. So here's my address pool. I've I've told it hand out addresses from 5.26 to 5.99, but I only want that to be used for for uh, units for devices on my network that are temporary and are mobile, uh, etc. Uh, things like my Roku's and my my Blu-ray players and my uh, Plex units, that kind of thing. I want them. To just be able to go out and people that come onto my wireless network, my my phones, etc., just be able to get an IP address temporarily and then leave the net uh, the network. So if you come under scope options, I have three options in here. I have the address of my default gateway, which is 5.254. Uh, DNS servers. I list the internal DNS server. This is that is this machine that is running Active Directory DNS. And then I list two secondary uh, DNS servers. That way, if something happens to the domain controller and it can't respond to DNS requests, it'll uh, it'll allow the, your workstation to use 8.8 .8 or 8 or 4.4. .4. And then for the DNS domain name, I just put in mcs.local. But there are tons of additional options that you can add to uh, a DHCP server, as you can see here, if you need any of these. And as we go on through the Windows Lab series, you may see me refer to this and and uh, use some of these because uh, they, they can be very helpful. And then my favorite part here are the reservations. So what I do is any machine that I want to get the same IP address from DHCP every single time is I create a, uh, a reservation in here. So what I've done is I have reserved the 40 series of IP addresses 40 through, you know, 
40 through let's say 40 through 59 I reserve those for actual machines on my network and then my lab series are going to start with the IP address of 60 so what I want to do if you come up here to address leases you'll see my Windows 7 units are getting IP addresses. Let's see if we can find them here. Uh, let's start with my Windows 10 Pro. So here's my MC, let me see here. Uh, here's my Windows 10 Pro, Lab 1, Lab 2, uh, Lab 1 and Lab 2 for Windows Pro, 7 Pro. And as you can see, uh, they're, getting, they're getting address leases, but I want to actually reserve an IP and I'm going to start with the IP address of 60 so let's say 60 through 70 I want to reserve those or 60 through 1 2 3 4 5 units so 60 through 65 I want to reserve for these lab units and it's just my uh, obsessive compulsive disorder <laughs> that kicks in here I just like uh, doing reservations for for machines that are not typically going to go anywhere on my network so what I'm going to do now is show you how to uh, reserve one of those IPs, uh, and then you can apply it. We can we'll apply it to all the Windows 10 units. So let's start with our Windows 10 Enterprise 64 Lab One. I don't want that to uh, use 5.35, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete that item, and I'm going to create a reservation. So I'm going to right click on reservations, click new reservation. I'm going to call this Windows 10 Enterprise Lab 1. I think that's what we called them. Let's just go make sure. We'll bring up Land Sweeper. So W10E-64-Lab1. So W10E-64 64 dash lab one and we know we're going to start at 60 on that one so we'll, we'll go here to 60 now what it wants is the mac address so let's go back to land sweeper let's just try doing it down here so windows 10 do okay let's just highlight that right click and copy it and we'll see if we can paste that Yep, looks like we were successful. And then when on the description, I like to do W10E-64-Lab1. I like to do that exactly as I've got it up at the reservation name. I'll go ahead and add that. Let's see, uh, may not be correct. You want to use it anyway? Uh, no. Uh, you need to take the little uh, colons out. So pardon me while I do that. I forgot that step. And then we'll add it close so now we've created a reservation right there for 60 now let's come back here and refresh this and you'll see that we have a reservation for Windows 10 Enterprise 64 lab 1 but the reservation is inactive so what we need to do is go out to our Windows 10 Enterprise machine so let's do that now And you get a couple of choices. You can reboot the machine, it'll get a new IP address, or you can do an IP config uh, command. Uh, I'm going to reboot the machine, and there's a reason I do this, because not only is it gonna renew the IP address, but it's also gonna re-register with DNS. Because remember, not only is our IP address changing, but we need to tell the DNS server, look, I'm not at 5.35 anymore, I'm, I'm at 5.60. So that's one of the things a reboot will do. So I'm gonna do a shutdown and restart. And keep your eye up, and keep your eye on this down here as it refreshes, because it should reflect that new IP address. And don't worry, we'll do this one more time with another We'll do it with a Windows uh, 7 unit. Now, you don't have to do this. This is just the way I prefer to do it. So I figured I might as well show you how to do a reservation and just to appease me. Uh, 
and my OCDness. You know, they used to call these good habits. Now they call them OCD. Uh, you know. There's always a method to the madness of why people do things the way they do them. And if you look down here now, you'll see that we now have a reservation of 5.60. So that did work. But let's just go ahead and log in. So if we come back over to our DHCP server and we do a refresh and we go down and look at 60, we'll now see that that reservation is active and it should have the right MAC address, which it does, and the description, and all is well. So now let's go do that with a Windows 7 machine, virtual machine. I'm just going to shut that one down. So let's try that with lab one. So if this is 60, let's say let's reserve the first five. So 60 through 65 will be reserved for Windows 10 lab machines. So let's reserve 66 for the Windows 7 Pro lab one. And there's the MAC address down there. So let's come here to, let's come here to Land Sweeper. Let's go to lab one and we're going to make that 66. So we're going to copy this MAC address. Then we're going to come back to our domain controller. We're going to make sure the Windows 7 machine doesn't already have. There it is. It does have an IP. So we want to delete that. Yep. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to come over here to reservations right click choose a new reservation so this is win 7 dash uh, see I forgot the name already uh, win 7 dash pro dash lab 1 okay win 7 dash pro dash lab 1 and we're gonna have that be number 66 because remember we're we're using 60 through 65 for the five Windows potential Windows 10 lab units. So now I'm going to right click and I'm going to paste that MAC address and I'm going to delete the colons out of here. Now, this is one of those things where, well, why did they put the colons in if they don't use them? Um, well, I guess it's just visually they put them in. I, I really don't know the answer to that question. Can 7 Pro dash W7 Pro Dash Lab 1. Okay. And we'll add it. And we'll close. So now if we go here to our address leases and we'll look at 66. Now we'll go back to our Windows 7 Pro machine, our lab machine. And actually we're going to restart. So we'll let that shut down and restart. Now, uh, I was talking about, while that's rebooting, let's come back over here to, uh, to the DHCP server. So when we were creating that reservation, you know, it asks us for a reservation name and a description. So the actual reservation name is will be filled in for you automatically. You could have just left that blank, but I like to put it in there with the name of the machine. Um, because uh, once it registers with a DHCP, it will register with whatever the machine name is. So let's refresh this and let's see if 66, 66 is now active. So you notice it didn't matter at all what I put in that reservation. That window, the DHCP server has actually gotten the actual name of the machine off of the off of the machine itself uh, so now we see the reservation is active and this is a description so I could put anything in that description I want to it doesn't have to be the same as the name the reservation name just FYI so let's come over here and let's log in now and let's just see what IP address we've been given Sorry guys, it got a little warm in here, so I turned the AC back on, so 
forgive the noise. Mm -mm. I'll come under here to status and go to details. So now we we are uh, uh, we do have the address of 5.66, just like I had hoped, uh, and it is getting a DHCP uh, uh, reservation. You can see right there, or an address from DHCP. All right, great. So I'm going to go ahead and log off of this machine. And then we'll go ahead and do our reservations for the rest of our machines as well. But before I do that, I want you to see something else. So let me just minimize the reservations here and come here to DNS. And let's see, let's go to mcs.local and see if our, reser if our IPs have changed here as well. And you notice they have. So not only did the DHCP reservation uh, work, but it also triggered uh, the machine to update DNS. Have you noticed when Windows 10 Enterprise 64 Lab 1 has now got the correct IP address and Windows 7 Pro Lab 1 has now got its correct IP address. So we've in effect killed two birds with one stone. Uh, our DNS has been updated and our DHCP reservation has been made. So let's go ahead and do the DHCP reservation for the rest of those uh, lab machines. So in preparation, let's go through here. We uh, Here's Windows 10 Pro 64 Lab 1. We want to delete that item. Here's Windows 10 Pro 64 Lab 2. We want to delete that item. And here's Windows 7 Pro Lab 2. We want to delete that item. Okay. So let's go ahead and do a new reservation. And this will be for WT, W10P64 Lab 1. W10P64 Lab 1. And even if I've got that wrong, that's quite all right. Now this one is going to be 61 because we started with 60 and so our next number is 61. You can you can use any numbering scheme you want. I'm going to come here to Land Sweeper. I'm going to make sure I grab the right. That's Lab One. Make sure I grab the right MAC address. Now I used to cut this stuff out of videos and people were going, we want to see everything you do. I'm like, okay. You want to see all the boring stuff. Okay, we'll add that. Alright, now let's do W10P-64-Lab2. And that's going to be 62 because we've already used 60 and 61. Come back here to Land Sweeper. Now we need Lab 2. So that's going to be this MAC address right here. Oop, went to the wrong machine. Okay. Now it's not going to interrupt, even though we deleted those, uh, those uh, address leases. It's not going to mess anything up right away. Okay, we'll add that, and then we need to do our, our Windows 7 machine. So that's uh, Wins W7-Pro-Lab2. Alright, so let's W7-Pro-Lab2. Ah, oh, right here. Now, as long as that MAC address does not change, the IP will be good. Now, this one, remember, we ended at 65 on the 10. We gave 66 to number 1, so we need to give 67 to this one. Sometimes it's hard to keep that straighten your head so you might want to make a usually I make a, a spreadsheet of all my planned IP addresses so that I know um, how they're all going to work out 
how they're all gonna the lay of the land, so to speak. Now, let's hope everything's done correctly. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and go back to address leases, and I'm gonna refresh. And you're gonna see the reservations are out here, but they're inactive, except for the Enterprise Lab One and Windows Seven Pro Lab One. So now, what we need to do is come back here. Going to uh, restart this machine. So we'll send Control Alt Delete. Then we can come here and tell it to restart. Fun, fun, fun. Now you can imagine if you had 20 or 30 or 40 machines to do this on, uh, it could get a little tedious. There are other ways to do DHCP. This is just the way that I have done them uh, with my networks. It's worked well for me. So we'll let that reboot. Then we also want to reboot uh, these. Get the reboot as well. Okay, so let's go back to our domain controller. Let's see if our reservations had kicked in. Uh, so Windows 7 Pro Lab 1 has got a reservation. It's active, and so is Windows 7 Pro Lab 2. There you go. And as these other machines reboot, we will see them become active. We're waiting on Lab 1 and Lab 2 to reboot. Now all my phone equipment I put in the 100 range and these are all the other, you know, these are all phones and this is a, uh, let's see, 111, the Roku in the bedroom. And you see where that description comes in handy because a lot of times you can't change this. Uh, it's, it's whatever is in the host name of the device. Um, except this one is not here anymore. I don't know why it shows it's still here. Interesting. And here's all the DirecTV wireless. Uh, that's funny because it shows them all. It, what's really weird is it shows them all as being active. Look. Interesting. I'll have to go clean those up. In fact, while we're here, let's just uh, clean these up. I don't need that one anymore. I don't need that one anymore. We haven't had DirecTV here in quite a while. So while we're here, let's clean those up. Yeah. All right, it should be good. Then refresh, and they shouldn't come back. Great. And now we see our Windows 10 Pro Lab 1 and Lab 2 now have their reservations active. So if we come back to Hypervisor 1, we just close all those. We'll see that uh, Lab 1 now has an IP address of 61. Lab 2 has 62, and of course it doesn't show the Windows 7 ones, okay? Now let's go back to our domain controller and let's check our DNS and make sure all of those entries have been updated. So we'll, we'll right-click on it, we'll reload, yes please, and then we'll do a refresh. So Lab 1 is 60, Lab 1 Pro is 61, Lab Pro 2 is 62, Windows 7 Lab 1 is 66, and Lab 2 is 67. So that, in a nutshell, is how we do DHCP and DNS. So while we're on the DHCP screen, you can see that I've also uh, made some... These, these are just uh, DHCP entries that are handed out as machines come on and off my network here. Anything above where it says reservation is kind of open to whoever wants to connect to my network. 
Uh, and you can see I've had some devices connecting to my guest network before. And then starting here are the reservations for my physical machines, for my lab machines, telephone equipment, and then um, my iPhones, my Android devices like phones and tablets, my Roku's. Uh, that's where this uh, description field comes in handy because you're able to put in English terms or, or in, in terms you understand what those are, uh, including my cameras. And I want them to, if you want a device to get the same IP every time, then you do a reservation. And I just find it, it, ver it very handy to keep all of my IPs assigned the way I want them to. It's just much, e much easier for me to do that so all of just about all of my equipment has a, a DHCP reservation or and or a hard-coded IP address and so you see there's really not much to DHCP and DNS on Active Directory now let me tell you this though if you're a home user and you have one of those home wireless routers uh, or home networking devices typically they come with DHCP enabled so you need to think, you need to plan ahead. If you're going to use, if you're going to set up a lab um, and you're going to use a DHCP server and a DNS server, then you probably, one, either need to turn that off on your wireless router or your, your home router and or you need to put your, uh, you put, put your lab network on a different subnet uh, with its own DHCP server because if you try to if you have the one on your wireless uh, router or your router at home activated and then you enable the one in Active Directory you're gonna have a conflict you're gonna have you're gonna have all kinds of crazy stuff happening trust me I've, I've made that mistake before and here's my recommendation if you're running an Active Directory network if you're running Windows server use the DHCP in Windows and use the DNS in Windows because they're all tied into Active Directory and they work very well together and you have one location to go and get the tool. The DHCP server under Windows Server is much more powerful than you're going to find on some wireless uh, networking device but yeah, if you want to keep it simple you could use DHCP on your wireless network and just not use it under Active Directory. That's entirely up to you. But that shows, that shows you how we set up DHCP reservations, how we verify DNS is working, how we joined it to the network. Um, and we'll be covering some more stuff in detail. Our next, uh, next one in the series of the lab is going to be uh, how to use group policies to do things like um, drive mappings, how to turn the firewall off, how to restrict settings on uh, user machines so they can't load software etc all that kind of wonderful stuff so make sure you tune in for that episode which will be coming up here whenever i get it done so i hope you found this video entertaining and informative as always give us a thumbs up down below leave your comments in the comments section and if you're so inclined we take paypal and patreon uh, donations so thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the other side